Hey guys, and welcome to another video on Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire by me, Pond. In this video, we're going to be on to the next review of Season Heroes. So, we've been working our way through the S3 heroes, and in the last video, we looked at Skybreaker, who was the only archers hero in the S3 group. So, that means we're um, halfway through, and we're now on to Warlord, which is the second of the four cavalry S3 heroes. So let's go straight into Mr. Warlord. And I'm pleased to say that this is an S3 that I do have, and I have managed to max him as well. Um, I think I picked up, back in S3, I picked him up and a duplicate in my rewards. And then, um, I, yeah, I think I've got two, worked, two uh, duplicates from fragments since then. So, uh, I, yeah, he is one of the three S3 heroes that I've got maxed. And, as I say, he's going to be cavalry. Pretty obvious, as he's uh, on a horse in the image. And um, he's recently had an update on his image as well. So he's looking pretty scary there. And as we can see up in the top left-hand corner, he is a support hero. Of course, as usual, the developers have not got the wording right here. And he's suitable for front and middle row not back row guys ignore that and um, let's go in and have a look at what skills he's got so of course first skill is going to be the dictator skill 23,100 bonus marching capacity the same as every other orange and season hero skill 2 sheath blade and it's a prep skill effective range 3 and this is targeting your three random friendly squads within effective range. So that is going to be all three squads in your Legion, guys. Um, so again, you know, when we look at these kind of skills and we talked in the earlier season heroes, often their skills would only be affecting maybe one of the squads in your Legion. So this, and then, you know, you'd hear me say about later on, you're going to see these more advanced heroes. They're going to be having a bigger impact on more of your troops, on more of your Legion. And that's exactly what Warlord's doing here with this skill. So during battle, all friendly cavalry squads have minus 20% basic attack damage initially. So that's the first section of the skill. And um, please bear in mind um, that obviously I've got this maxed. So that 20% doesn't change and whatever level you have this on. Um, but the second part will increase as you level him up. And so what that means is that all of the troops in your legion, um, they will take 20% less damage when the troops of your opponent attack them. That's all that's doing for you. So that's a nice buff. Obviously, less damage to your troops means more are going to survive. Um, you know, less of them are going to get injured, right? And that's uh, one of the key elements of the battle mechanic is to keep as many troops alive as you can while obviously killing as many of your opponents as you can. Those are the two kind of key elements we're looking for here. And so the second part then is a 45% increase in combat skill damage. Uh, so that is buffing the skills of the other um, of any of the heroes that are in your legion, the other two leg uh, skills, uh, the other two heroes, that um, if they have any direct damage skills, uh, then this is going to give a 45% increase in those skills damage. So it's a really good, um, it's a, kind of got this uh, balanced two elements to it. It's improving your defense and also improving your offense. And with this second part, it moves from 22.5% increase up to the 45% increase at level 10, guys. All right. Of course, skills three and four are defensive formation up to between 5% and 50% increase in the resistance for the troops in your specific squad that Warlord is leading. And skill four is the offensive formation, up to 50%, between 5% and 50% for the might of the troops in your hero squad that he's leading. On to skill five, the next hero specific skill. Ironically, it is called Bleeding Steed. And this is a status skill. And as you can see, the effective range is zero. And when an effective range is zero, that means that it is going to affect just the squad that your hero is leading. So, as it says, one random friendly squad within effective range, which is his own squad. And on the first two turns, whenever the hero squad takes damage, 70% 70, 70 chance to evade and avoid this damage. So again, you know, we've talked about this before. Your, the, the really good 
front row heroes, defensive heroes, support heroes, they are protecting your troops for as long as possible in the battle. It's a really key element that you want to have as many troops on your front row for as long as possible. So with this skill, you know, it's giving you a very high percentage chance. Again, remember, we talked about before some skills are 30, 35, 40 percent. And OK, this one does start at 25 percent at level one. But when you max it up, 70 percent chance. Uh, for both of the first turns for the troops in your hero squad to avoid taking any damage at all guys So that is a so that's a quarter of the battle You might not lose any troops on your front row if this skill is activating for both times And you know, you've got a two at two in three chance effectively just over two in three chance of this of this activating for both of the first turns. So it's a really nice skill there uh, skill six of course is awaken and as usual, you've got the 250% bonus to leadership skills. So you max out your troop count and give that buff to the other leadership skills um, in the hero. And then again, another element of having a really good support hero. Uh, as you can see, this extra 20% resistance, um, which is a big buff to the resistance for those troops on that front row, if you've got him on the front row. And then nice, also a nice 120 plus cavalry speed um, buff as well. So hopefully your troops on that front row, they can get in and attack first with those two elements. Skill seven, discipline. Um, as with a lot of heroes, um, it's a might buff for Warlord. So uh, he'll give you between 13% and 40% might buff for all of the troops in your Heroes Legion, all three squads in your formation. And then on to skill eight, War God Descends. It's a prep skill, effective range two, targets one random friendly squad within effective range. So this is a, another um, support skill. It's it's a defensive skill in the, well, it's a buff skill for your own troops. So it's not, uh, it's not an offensive minded combat skill. And being a prep skill, as long as again, your opponent doesn't have a hero that disables prep skills, and there are a couple that do that, um, then this skill will activate um, for sure, but then it just depends on the chance. So um, on turns one, three, five, and seven, so that's half the battle, guys. Don't forget a battle has eight turns. So on half the turns, when you max this skill, there's a 100% chance to increase the chance of casting for one random friendly squad's final combat skill to 100%. If the skill requires prepping, a 60% chance to skip that one, skip one turn of the prepping. Um, now, what are the variables on this? So uh, from level one, there's a 55% chance to increase the chance of casting. So when you max a skill, what it's effectively doing is it is guaranteeing one other hero's final combat skill to work four times in the battle. And, um, you know, because, and that's why it's on skills one, three, five, and seven, I, I, I guess, because then even if it's a prep skill that requires one um, one turn to prep, right? And um, even if this 60% chance doesn't activate, then those skills will still activate on turns two, four, six, and eight, if that makes sense. So um, like we keep we keep saying before, um, at those early at the earlier stages in the game, a lot of these skills are chance skills where you're really kind of relying on a one in three chance, one in four chance even sometimes of, of a skill activating to do that damage. And again, Warlord guarantees you um, that four, four of your hero, uh, four of your complementary heroes skill, last skills will activate in the battle four times um, with this skill. So it's a really, really nice skill. If you think if it's gonna activate for your back row hero, then often that's going to do a lot of damage to your opponents. Um, so that is, you know, why Warlord is a is a nice rounded hero. Um, that again, you know, he's got these elements where he's affecting your defense and also your offense. And you know, skill five again sets of making your troops survive longer. So he's um, he's definitely going to be an up well. Let's look at the, the kind of formations he's going to be in. So we've already talked about the fact that you would want Beast Queen, uh, Rosen and Immortal as your kind of primary cavalry unit, as your ca primary cavalry legion. If you're a big spender and you can get all of those, 
for the rest of us, um, if you can get those three, um, great, and keep then getting them, uh, you know, with fragments, etc., uh, to get your duplicates. Um, Warlord, what are you going to use him for? Well, actually, he's going to work really well with the following two heroes that we're going to be reviewing. So Warlord would go on the front row, uh, Roko Bishuten will go on the middle row, and Living Saint would be a back row in this combination of three S3 heroes. And that is the kind of secondary cavalry legion uh, that you're going to want to run with um, up into um, until you, we reach Eden, and then you've got these other X heroes coming into the frame, and, and that, that does change things around a bit. Um, but certainly for those of you guys in S3 and S4, um, Warlord, Roku, Living Saint, that's going to be your secondary um, Cavalry Legion, okay? When else can you use him? Well, interestingly enough, he does actually work well um, later on in the game as well. You're going to get uh, Lawman, who is a front row. She's a SX3 hero. And those of us that start Eden, you can currently recruit SX1, 2, and 3 heroes. So we were able to get uh, Lawman immediately uh, at the start of our first season of Eden um, a couple of months ago. And you can put, actually, funny enough, you can put Law Lawman on the front row warlord middle and then with those two any of the kind of three um end game back row cavalry heroes will work so that is living saint um a mortal or the avalanche um you can have um the lawman warlord and then any one of those three back row heroes i've just referenced they're a nice combination you get a good balance again because warlord's got that second skill which is giving the defensive and off offensive elements um, you're going to have a very kind of def defensive, solid first couple of rows in your formation. And then, um, you know, those two heroes are going to be then doing a lot to buff your back row hero for the kills. So that's, uh, that's a nice combination as well. So uh, potentially you can be using Warlords um, all the way through the game, depending on uh, your like what other mixture of X heroes you've got. Uh, it just depends. But yeah, he's a really good hero. I'm I'm glad that I have him on my front row. He's certainly, you know, an upgrade on anything else that I would have had before. Um, whether that's like North Rage or, or Bulwark. Um, so yeah, I, he's a good hero for sure. And um, like I say, he's uh, you, you could potentially be using him um, for the rest of the time in the game. Just depends what you go for. Um, when it comes to those SX heroes. So that's it. War that's everything about Warlord, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, as usual. And thank you to all of you for all the support on the channel. Um, we're continuing the, uh, the subscriptions continue to fly up. Thank you so much. For those of you that haven't already, please do click that subscribe, ring the bell. Please do share my channel in your Alliance Chat, Province Chats, uh, Imperial Messages, all the, of that stuff. And um, if you could share as well on Discord, Line, WhatsApp, um, whatever you use to communicate with those that you play in the game, I really appreciate it. Um, just one more reminder to all of you about level 10 resource plots. Please do not come to State 55. Unfortunately, our Farm Alliance is full. It's been full for quite a few days. I'm still getting quite a lot of people messaging me about this. Unfortunately, we do not have space for anyone and there isn't another Farm Alliance in 55 that has um, level 10 resource tiles. Like I said in the video, you know, it, I was getting so many queries about it. It was, you know, I was trying to explain why it happened along with, you know, the potential of how you could possibly find someone. So, you know, if you guys are having um, Clash of Province one week with an uh, older state and, uh, you know, they're a friendly bunch, then why not ask if you could pop a farm into one of their, like, farm alliances if they've got level 10 resource tiles. You might get lucky... You might not. It just depends how fr friendly they are, right? Um, so um, that is everything for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and um, I will see you soon.